This series of Between the Hedges spent the last seven episodes painting the perfect TT picture. We've looked at the king of the mountain, studied the 10 second gaps. In this final episode, we're looking at why these racers travel from the four corners of the globe to ride as fast as they can around this place. Let's clear one thing up right now. It's not the taking part that counts. I want to beat the guy in first the most. <laughs> um, I want to beat them. I want to beat everyone. Every race is the same. I'm not going to lie, I go racing because I like racing. And if you're racing for a position, why, why would you race for third if you can race for a win, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, we all want to win races. We all want to win races, don't we? Well, you've got to remember it's a competition and you've got to try and get an advantage over all your competitors. That's all you're looking for is that little bit of advantage over him, over him, over him to, to be best to win it. Like you say, I think next year, I think there's going to be a few people knocking on the door. They're all capable of winning the race straight away, so it's all down to the rider now. So I was feeling the best on the day, the bike's got to be right on the day. There's so many things that can go wrong around here, it'll blow your mind. This game, this whole game is... 90% of it is in your head. And you need to be right in your head. Some of you will have spent years convincing yourself that TT racers just aren't right in their head. Listening to them talk here, however, forces the question, maybe they're the ones that have had it right all along and we are missing out. It also begs the question, what came first? The short circuit chicken or the road racing egg? I only started racing to race the TT. That is the only reason why I started racing motorbikes, was to do the TT uh, and Scarborough, believe it or not. The only reason I started racing was to do the TT, so TT, Southern 100, Northwest 200. You know, the TT is only two weeks in the year, but you can't just ride for those two weeks flat out. You've got to be doing the build-up beforehand. The problem is, where do you go race? You know, we've probably got half the amount of road circuits going on that we had 20, 30 years ago, so... You've got to ride your bike. The more you ride your bike, the better you get. Where do you go? Go somewhere really competitive to push yourself. BSB helps. The proof's in the pudding, a bit. I'll have a tenner of BSB rider wins. <laughs> a TT, all the TTs this year. Somebody's been doing some BSB stuff. A lot of people did it before, didn't they? Ian Hutchison was a very, very successful short circuit racer. Michael Rudder was. John McGuinness was a British 250 champion. McGuinness has done super stock, bloody hell, since 2008. When I was in my best, I was doing some short circuit, maybe some world endurance. I was super fit. <laughs> I'm laughing now, but I never was super fit, but I was super bike fit from doing world endurance, riding for Padgett's and Superstock and, and just it was all just a continuous, I used to hit the ground running, riding the same bikes week in week out, you get to the TT, pff, off you go, you know. And that's the thing with like Peter Hake, when you've seen him, he's capable of winning the BSB Championship. And then you've got like Lee Johnston, Lee who goes so well in the Supersport, British Supersport Championship, could be British Supersport Champion. And any of the BSB riders, if they wanted to come here and they, they were brought here, they'd all be fast. Well, who else has come through that hasn't? The only other one is Davy Todd. Davy Todd is a short circuit racer, 100%. You know, who is going to come from pure road racing? Uh, Connor. So Connor Cummins is a good short circuit racer that didn't pursue that. I certainly haven't been recognised because of my short circuit efforts. I get recognised because I'm a TT rider. Outside of him, where do you look? Uh... Michael. 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 Michael's an interesting one, isn't he? <laughs> like Michael Dunlop and all the all short circuit racers. People forget this. They went into national road racing younger. You know, fair play to them because they done it with probably the least amount of track racing. Michael's unique. There's not many people that can ride a bike two times a year and then come to the TT and win two races, if you know what I mean. It's just like natural talent. He's a big future of this place and road racing in general. I think the, the actual matter of the thing has actually changed. Back when it was real road racing, when road racers only done road racing, we, all we did was road racing. Now it's came more to the point where it's, you know, a lot of the BSB riders now are floating in, who are full-time professional racers, where a lot of the road racers are your nine to five worker, and then go racing at the weekend, which have sort of the thing started to change a little bit, where it's all just sort of BSB now. I, I never. The problem is, I never really done a big pile of it, and because you're in Ireland, you're quite restricted. You know, to get anywhere, it's like boats, time, 
to, we, we never really went down that route, so now you're sort of having to do bits and pieces. Uh, I don't mind BSB, I just, I never had the chance at it, and probably now not good enough to do it, so. But you need uh, to be, running at the front of the BSB, you need everything. You know what I mean? You need to have everything has got to be on point because you're literally splitting hairs in time. And the thing with the BSB thing is people look at the, the results sheet and they see the people down here and they just go, oh, they're rubbish, you know, they're at the back. It's not true. It's not a true reading of what the actual, the speed of everybody is. The trend at the minute is British Championship sort of racing, but trends change. All good riders have got it in them to be good at both. 100%, 100%. All good talents, all good riders have got it in them. It's whether they, what they want. I was at the British Grand Prix in the mid 80s and Joey Dunlop finished, I think it was 14th or 15th and he was just king of the roads, wasn't he? He was just Joey the road racer, but he wasn't. He could do it, but he didn't want it that much. He wanted this. But what exactly is this. Molly makes this sound so easy because Molly is this. Does a TT win really feel that much different to a short circuit win? And if it does, which TT win means the most to those that know? The senior is the one to win. That's the one everybody wants to win. That's the one I've always said. All the kudos is winning the big bike. Win the two 600 races and then Friday it's forgotten about if you win the senior. Sorry, but that's just the way it is. The senior is the one you want to win. That is the baby, that's the boy. That's the one that we all dream of. <laughs> yeah, to win the senior would be very, very special. That's the one that everyone wants to win, really. So I'd rather win them all, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'll take whatever I want. If I can get any of them, I'll take any of them. It doesn't make no difference to me. I think everyone wants to win TTs, don't they? Do you know what I mean? Obviously, they're harder, than, they're harder to come by nowadays, but... Uh... The problem is now that in the top 10, there's that many fast people. So who's the light going to shine on this year? Who is the bookie's favourite's favourite? Who do you need to beat to beat everyone? It's always going to be the main guys, you know, as far as competition goes. Can't look past Hickey. Yeah, Hickman's going to be the man to beat. I can't look past the outright lap record holder. He is, he's the, for me, the one at the moment who sets the standards. For me, he's the man, Peter. Um, only just. Can't look past Harrison. Obvious answer straight away is Dean. The main contenders are obviously going to be, uh, you have to go on previous form, which is obviously you've got Peter, Dean, there's Michael. Can't look past Michael Dunlop. Michael's always going to be strong, especially on a 600 as well. And That's when there's that many. You can, yeah, you can, there's that many competitors. Michael Dunlop is fast in everything he rides, whether it's a little bike or a big bike, you know what I mean? So there's loads of competitors in there. Connor, obviously, as well, you know. There's more to come from, from Connor. Connor's ready to go fast again. Connor wins deserves a win, doesn't he? Personally, I think Connor deserves one. Yeah, it'd mean, it'd mean the world to get that, so... Uh, Hellbent on achieving it, and I'll just keep trying. It's like ten guys now who can be right up there, Hillier. You never know with James, Hillier. Hillier is a steady, solid, and he's a Sunday morning man, I call him. He's not interested in practice, and he'll come out of the woodwork for races. He's a uh, understated, isn't he, James? Hutchie, I don't know, one Hutchie... When everything clicks into place, such as can win. There's loads of lads, isn't there? Lee Johnson, 600, he's so fast in the 600, even the sock bite, he's just, yeah, loads of them. The next obvious one, at least this week, is Davey, as we've spoke about already. Because I think he really is a special talent. He's been, he's been really strong. Davey could win a race, not to say that, that'd be great. Rutter's just out there enjoying himself, and he, you know, he's a bit like me. Old Codger just running around, picking up the pieces. Uh, the list just goes on, really. I think at some stage of the, the game, everyone uh, has potential to win. All the top 20 lads are all very, very capable lads. They're all capable of winning the race. But again, you've got to look at the machinery that everybody's on as well. So main contenders, I, like I said, I don't, don't really look at it like that, but the, the obvious people that are going to be right at the front are clearly the Birchall boys, the Crow lads, Pete Fans and Jevon Wormsley, you know, them three teams have got every everything they need to be right at the front. But anything, I'm not looking at it like that. I'm going in to just do the best I can and forget about the rest of them. John, I think, is a challenger. 
for me, you can never write off uh, McGuinness. You know, it's not just he's just turning up to to get his start or whatever. He wants to do well, and uh, he's still mega passionate about it. So he's he's not he's not done yet. Clearly, the question of whether Hickey will win again is easy to answer. Of course he will. But imagine if the Morgan missile struck again and sent a road racing shockwave around the world. Another four wins, probably, <laughs> to be king of the mountain, but whether that's going to happen again, I don't know. I and mean, if I did do that, I reckon I'd get assassinated in uh, Ireland, so uh, I'd have to do some hiding. But, uh... Records are always made to be broken. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, this TT could have gone for another 100 years, it's run 100 years, or when I'm dead, somebody else could be doing it, you know what I mean? You know, you, you can't, you know, records are always made to move on, you know, that you can only do what you can do, no matter what race you win, it'll always count to your tally at the end of, you know what I mean? It's, it's uh, obviously Joey has the most wins, which is pretty impressive. The only good thing for me is, obviously with the family name and whatnot, we've got quite a high amount of them, obviously, so with with their whole, I think we're up to, uh, Joey's, 52. So you know, <laughs> you know that's a, you know for me that's a pretty impressive number. I think so. It's uh, you know Joey done it over over scale. I done it obviously in that shortest half period of time. Obviously two years of missing. TT hasn't helped, uh, but sure like it. it's a way of life. Time stops for no man. Everything keeps rolling on. And roll on it does. Preferably just like that, on one wheel. Whether it's between the houses or the hedges, the Isle of Man remains the road racing capital of the world. This is live TT coverage on TT Plus, the only place for breathtaking, exhilarating, edge of your seat action. The only place for heroes, record breakers and history makers. The only place for unmissable moments and speed like no other. Absolutely incredible. Dean Harrison through horse lead, always a man on a mission. We're on for a race, folks. Oh, Michael Dunlop. Ben and Tom Virgil have 11 victories. David Todd leads and Glenn Helen doing the business. This is the Isle of Man TT races. Every qualifying and every race, live and on demand. Get your TT Plus Live Pass today and secure your place at TT 2023.